Any attempt to understand the real dimensions of AIDS cases in Africa versus the alarmism and the fabrication of AIDS cases that you find in the media, that kind of understanding has to start with a basic recognition of what we are defining when we talk about an AIDS case in Africa. An AIDS case in Africa has been defined since 1985, officially by the World Health Organization, as a cluster of clinical symptoms. Those symptoms include uh, a persistent dry cough, high fever, uh, diarrhea for a couple of weeks, and a 10% loss of body weight over uh, maybe a two month period. Now, those clinical symptoms were defined in 1985 by Western researchers to constitute an AIDS case in Africa. That is what is being counted. However, it's important to understand that those symptoms are the classic symptoms of malnutrition, tuberculosis, malaria, and a wide range of very common, very widespread, and very long-standing diseases of poverty and underdevelopment. What happened, however, was the context of African life or African political economies in the early 80s has been lost, or lost, I should say, to AIDS researchers who seem to care very little about the history of their projections, care very little about the context in which African lives were being threatened in the late 70s and 80s, and care very little about critical second thoughts over what exactly it is they're counting. So for example, if you look at South Africa, which I think is a country worth focusing on, number one, because it is said to be the country in Africa which is ground zero of the global world uh, AIDS epidemic, ground zero of the world pandemic of AIDS. Number two, it is the country in Africa which absolutely maintains the finest registry of mortality and morbidity statistics, unlike any other country, because it's the most economically and industrially advanced. When you look at South Africa, you discover, for example, as I have, the latest statistics from Statistics South Africa, uh, May of 2006, which cover the causes of death back in 2004, those are the latest numbers officially we have from South Africa. There is no keeping of the record of AIDS. There is something called HIV diseases. Now, the media reports that a thousand people a day die of AIDS in South Africa. I hear that number, I wonder where it comes from. It is a number from nowhere. It is a number with no statistical grounding, no evidentiary basis whatsoever. It is simply something repeated in the media. But if one goes and checks that number against the actual official statistics of South Africa, what you will discover is there is no such thing called AIDS in South Africa. There's something called HIV diseases. In 2004, the total number of deaths in South Africa country of 46 million people, the total number of deaths that were attributable to HIV diseases was about 13,000. That's about 36 a day. There's no way of knowing how HIV was actually the cause of death of those 13,000 people. There are few, if any, autopsies ever performed. If you ask doctors or coroners or health officials how they determined that HIV diseases were the cause of death, you will get a blank stare from them. It's important also when looking at South Africa to remember the history of South Africa. South Africa was a racially divided state officially from 1948 when apartheid became the state government policy and territorially divided the country until 1994, when Nelson Mandela became the first head of state of a post-apartheid state. It's curious, if you look at sickness in South Africa, if you look at where you have cases of AIDS, 
or even where you have cases of HIV diseases, they will almost invariably be found in the areas that used to be part of the so-called homelands, of the Bantu stands, a core central feature of apartheid, which was the division of South Africa into ethnic homelands. One of the worst and most abused of these states was KwaZulu-Natal, the area to the north of the coastal city of Durban. And it is not an accident that KwaZulu-Natal is said to be the center place for some new kind of out-of-control tuberculosis or malaria related to HIV diseases incidents uh, or the number of cases of AIDS itself. I'm suggesting that if you want to understand what is making Africans sick anywhere, but let's take South Africa, it's crucial to know the specifics of the history of that country itself. I have asked and never found good, solid statistics on mortality and morbidity at a provincial level or a district level for any other African country. If you want to know, is AIDS a new lethal epidemic? The concept of new means that you have to be able to compare it to what Africans were dying of in 1970, 1980, 1985, 1990. I defy anyone to produce those statistics for the causes of death in, say, Tanzania, or Uganda, or Kenya, or South Africa for that matter and you will notice the absence of reliable statistics. Now, I'm not attempting to focus only on numbers or statistics. However, any discussion about AIDS in Africa starts with numbers. It starts from X number of people suffering from AIDS, X number of people orphaned as a result of AIDS, a certain number of people are HIV positive in Africa. A certain number of people have died of AIDS over the last 30 years. A certain number of people will die of AIDS over the next 30 years. If you look at any standard media report on AIDS in Africa, those reports grab the attention of the public by talking about sex, blood, death, and numbers. That's an inescapably good combination to sell papers. I, on the other hand, tend to look at the sources of those numbers. Who created the statistic? Why was the statistic created? What purpose was it designed to serve? And that is where the standard orthodox interpretation of AIDS in Africa cannot stand scrutiny. Because the closer you look at the numbers, the quicker they vanish. And you realize, quite obviously, that a new term has been fobbed off on Africa to define and explain what really is the deepening spiral of poverty, unemployment, civil disturbances, uh, diseases connected with malnutrition, tuberculosis, and so forth. It's a, it's a wonderfully easy and very glib kind of theory. At its heart, at its core, it assumes that if Africans will change their sexual behavior, if Africans will wear condoms, if Africans, males, will be circumcised, this will be the answer to AIDS. Or